Welcome to the ninth day Bible reading. Uh, today we are going to be reading from Genesis chapter 41 to chapter 45. And I'm going to be reading for four days of reading today because over the weekend I could not do it. So I'm going to be reading from chapter 41 to chapter 45 now. Chapter 41. Then it came to pass. And the last one was Joseph being in prison. Joseph being sold by his brothers as a slave. And Joseph being imprisoned by his master, by his master, Potiphar, because he was accused of trying to rape his master's wife. And inside the prison, he translated the dream for the chief butler and the chief baker. And the dream was according to what he translated. But the chief butler did not remember Joseph, when he, went, when he got out of prison, now we are continuing from chapter 41 today. Chapter 41, Pharaoh's dreams. Then it came to pass, at the end of two full years, that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly there came out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the middle. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them, out of the river, ugly and gaunt and stood by the other cows on the bank of the, of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So, Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamt a second time. And suddenly, seven earths of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin earths, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin earths deferred the seven plump and full earths. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent a call, and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my thoughts this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants, and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man, he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to, office, to my office and he yanked him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can understand the dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh and said, It is not me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream, I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly, several cows came out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the middle. And then, behold, several other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt, such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I awoke. Also I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven earths came up on one stalk, full and good. Then behold, seven earths withered, withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the thin earths deferred the seven good earths. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one. Who could explain it to me? Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good eggs are seven years. The dreams are one, and the seven thin and ugly cows, which came up after them, are seven years. And the seven empty eggs, blighted by the east wind, are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. 
but after them seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt and the famine will deplete the land so the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following for it will be very severe and the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the same is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them and let them keep food in the cities then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine so the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all the servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took a signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and he clothed him in garments of fine lining and put a gold chain around his neck and he had him ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without your consent no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Savnat Pane. And he gave him as a wife Asinat, the daughter of Potif the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped planting for it was immeasurable. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came. Whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, king of On, brought to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God had made me forget all my toil and, and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began, began to come. As Joseph had said, the famine was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, whatever he says to you, do. The famine was all over the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in the land. Chapter 42 When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there, that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But, Joseph, but Jacob did not send Joseph's brother, Benjamin, with his brothers. For he said, Let some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went up to buy grain among those who joined it. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. 
but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to, <laughs> and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamt about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the son of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner, you shall be tested by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not leave this place unless your younger, your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be, <laughs> that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house. But you, go and carry grain for the famine of your houses, and bring and bring your youngest brothers and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. And Reuben said, And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you, <laughs> and you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened the sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money. And there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their earth, then their earth filled them, and they were afraid, saying to one of them, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to them? What is this that God has done to us? Then they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told him all that happened to them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your household and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me, so I shall know that you are no spice, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks, that surprisingly, each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Chapter 43 Now the Famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had bought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. 
for the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. The initial said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our families, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him, According to these words, we possibly have known that he would say, Bring your brother down. Then Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. I myself will be shorty for him, for my aunt you shall require him, if I do not bring him back to you, and set him before you. Then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not lingered, surely by now we would have returned this second time. And their father, and their father Israel said to them, if it's, if it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry them, and carry down a present for the man, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Then uh, take your brother also and arise, go back to the man. And may God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If, if I am bereaved, I, I am bereaved. So the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double money in their hand, and arose and went down to Egypt. And they stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my own, and slaughter an animal, and make ready. For this man will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was returned in our sack the first time, and that we were brought in, that we are brought in, so that it may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. Then they drew near to the stewards of to the steward of Joseph's house. They talked with him at the door of the house and said, Oh sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, but it happened. When we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks, and there each man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full with, so we have brought it back in our hand. And we have brought down other money in our hand to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sack. But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I add your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet and they gave their donkeys feed. Then they made the presents ready for Joseph's coming at noon. For they heard that they would eat bread, that they would eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed down before him to the earth. Then he asked them about their well-being and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they answered, Your servant our father is in good earth. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads down and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom he spoke to me? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made his and sought somewhere to weep, and went into his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and he restrained himself and said, Serve the bread. So they set him a place by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him. Him by themselves because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. Then he took servants to them from before him. But Benjamin's servant was five times as much as any of theirs, so they drank and were merry with him. Chapter 44 And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry, 
and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. Also put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest and his growing money. So he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the money dawned, the men were sent away, they and their donkeys. Then they had gone out of the city. When they had gone out of the city and were not yet far off, Joseph said to his steward, Get up, follow the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, why, why have you repaid evil for good? Is not this the one from which my Lord drinks, and, we, and with which he indeed practices divination? You have done evil in so doing. So he overtook them and spoke to them these same words. And they said to him, Whom does my Lord say? Why does my Lord say these words? Far be it from us that your servants should do such a thing. Look, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which we find in the mouth of our sacks. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's slave. And he said, Now also, let it be according to your words. Now he, he with whom it is found shall be my slave, and he shall be blameless. Then each man speedily lets down his sack to the ground, and each opened his sack, so he searched. He began with the oldest and left off with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes, and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. So Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said to them, What did is this that you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination. Then Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how sh shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of our servants. Here we are, my Lord's slave, both we and he also with whom the cup was found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave. And as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's hearing, and do not let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even like Pharaoh. My Lord asked my Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a brother or your, have you a father or your brother? And he said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, who is young. His brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servant, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. And he said to my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father, his father would die. But you said to your servants, Unless your youngest, your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. So it was when we went up to your servants, my father, that we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go back and buy us a little food. But we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother is with us, if our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, Do you know that my wife bore me two sons, and the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. But if you take this one also from me, and calamity befalls him, he shall bring down my grey hair with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I came to your, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad is not with us, since his life is bound up in the lad's life, it will happen when he sees that the lad is not with us that he will die. So your servants will bring down the grey hair of our, of your servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. So for your servant became shorty for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father forever. Now therefore, please let your servants remain remain instead of the lad as a slave to my lord, and let the lad go up with his brothers, for how shall I go up to my father if the lad is not with me, lest perhaps I see the evil that would, that would come upon my father. Chapter 45 Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of 
Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brother, as I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brother, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold in Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine had been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a pros a posterity for you in the earth and to save you and save your lives by a great deliverance so now it was so now it was not you who sent me here but god and he had made me a father to fail and the lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of egypt hurry and go up to my father and say to him thus says your son joseph god had made god has made me lord of all egypt Come down to me, do not stay. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of, of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. And of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brother stopped with him. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's, in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brother has have come. So it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And the, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this. Load your animals and depart. Go to the land of Canaan, bring your father and your households, and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, do this, take carts out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. Bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them carts according to the commandment according to the command of, J of Pharaoh, and he gave them provision and for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each man, changes of garments, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. And he sent to his father these things, ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread and food for his father for the journey. So he sent his brothers away, and they departed. And he said to them, See that you do not become troubled along the way. Then they went up, up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to Joseph to Jacob their father. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive and is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words which Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the cats which Joseph had sent to carry him. The spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Then Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. We'll come to the end of the ninth day reading. I think ninth day. <laughs> ninth day reading. We'll continue after this, right after this, the tenth day reading from chapter 46 to chapter 50. And then from chapter 50 to I think Exodus chapter something. In chapter 50, okay. From, ch uh, from Exodus chapter 1 to chapter 5 after that. And then from chapter 6 to chapter 10. Stay tuned.